Yet friends, you're here to make high protein soy free tofu made from green peas that are easily accessible at grocery stores and at relatively low prices too. Maybe because soy gives you trouble, maybe because you are trouble. Maybe you just love to see what plants can do, like me, and we'll find out if it's really worth it. But first, I'm Mary and you're in my kitchen, so let's get started by soaking some dried split green peas. Hot soaking means using just boiled water. A glass mason jar may not be the best choice at home for safety, but it sure looks pretty on camera, don't you agree? It will take only four hours to fully hydrate these split peas, but if you have more time, an overnight cold soak in the fridge is safer and might even make the milking step easier. And if you didn't find split peas and your peas are whole, it might be an even better idea. After soaking the peas, it should be nice and plump. Although not as beautiful as before, we will be making beautiful tofu with them. Let's drain and rinse them. Next, the traditional step of high-speed blending. I mean, in olden days, they would use a stone mill, but I'm pretty sure my ancestors would approve. I always do half at a time to avoid possible explosions, but feel free to live dangerously. Blend for 30 seconds at high speed. If your blender is not as powerful, you will have to blend a little longer and troubleshoot using the pulp as a guide. If that doesn't make sense yet, don't worry, it will. Now get your favorite nut milk bag. Pour your green pea puree in. Do up the top and get your frustrations out. It helps to have a nut milk bag that is quite fine but very strong. I'll link mine, which I've had for years, in the description box below. Anyways, once you can't squeeze any more liquid from your pulp at all, give it one last effort. You can do it. And stretch. Maybe give yourself a little massage. Maybe with some essential oils for the muscles. You deserve it. And then save that pulp for adding fiber to your next bread recipe or look up soy pulp recipes online and follow those. You've got lots of options other than compost. But do take a look at that pulp, especially if you're using a not high speed blender, you've got to inspect. The consistency needs to be very consistent and fine, no chunky bits. If there are chunky bits, you might want to re-blend that with a bit more water. Adding extra water will not hurt the process. This pulp, however, is perfect. But please, don't forget about the other half. you have this lovely jade green milk floating above a layer of starch. So we need to add an additional non-traditional step to this process. Starch interferes with tofu curds joining together and making a bouncy block. So to avoid the mushy consequences of leaving it in, we'll let this milk sit for 40 minutes to an hour. Afterwards, you can see more starch has settled to the bottom. For the tofu, we just want the milk on the top. And this leftover green pea starch can be used just like cornstarch. I'm going to save mine for later. Then it's time to take it to the stove, along with our trusty flat-sided spatula to stir the bottom and avoid sticking and burning. And optionally, our laser thermometer because we're obsessed with taking the temperature of things. No, just me? Anyways, we want to get this to a simmer, but be careful because this stuff can foam up just like soy milk will. Once we're here, control the heat to keep a steady low simmer. Not a big rolling boil, but something more gentle to cook the milk completely over the course of 10 minutes. In the meantime, you can get your coagulant ready. Calcium sulfate is my favorite traditional coagulant because it doesn't add any flavor and it's cheap as dirt. Link in the description. For a batch made from one pound of peas, you'll want one and a half teaspoons of this going into a half cup of room temperature or slightly warmish water. 
just keep it nearby. When your milk is cooked, give it a taste. Because why not? It's deliciously savory, like green pea soup, but more refined. Now get the heat up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit or thereabouts. Stir that coagulant to kick the calcium back up, and then stir the whole thing into the milk. We want to distribute the coagulant evenly. And then stand the spatula straight up to stop it. Cover and wait 15 minutes for the magic to work. Then abracadabra, we have green pea curds floating in clear way. That is what we want. Put into your lovely tofu press. Fold over the cloth neatly to keep the curds in there. Everyone knows why this press is my favorite by now, right? And time for the whey taste test. It's delicious, like a light, savory vegetable broth without any added herb flavors, so it's super versatile for all your soup and sauce needs and anything else you can think of. So keep it in the fridge for up to a week. Now the tofu should go into the fridge and chill through to firm up. And the next day, let's reveal your beautiful green pea tofu. It has a wonderful firm texture. Still quite a thin little block, isn't it? some bounce. Not quite so bouncy as soy tofu or my new high protein chickpea tofu, but still lovely nonetheless. Don't you want this beautiful green tofu at your next exotic tofu tasting party? Spoiler alert, it has the taste of green peas and some of the texture, but let's see how it cooks up. Using a different method than we've done in the past, usually on these episodes we air fry or deep fry them or both. This footage is actually the first time I've tried boiling any of these Willet Tofu tofus. As I suspected, the tofu is losing its edges. Little bits of curds are finding its way in the water. It doesn't keep together that well. You'd have to be very delicate with this. But I'm going to take one out and we're going to see how it is. Ooh, it's kind of jellyish. <gasps> That's actually kind of nice. Question is, can I chopstick it? I can. Hey, it's this is like a medium or a firm tofu now. Okay, I like this actually. Okay. <laughs> The texture has improved. It is feeling a lot more like a medium, soft to medium tofu, like the kind that's packed in water. That's it's giving me that texture and a little bit of added salt from that salted water. Mmm! And there you have it. Green peas will indeed tofu, and they'll tofu beautifully. And maybe you should try boiling your tofu. And then, if you haven't already, check out my new chickpea tofu video, which is unlike other chickpea tofu recipes on YouTube. It's dare I say better. Thanks so much for watching, my friends. Please give this video a thumbs up and let me know what else you think I should tofu. In the meantime, I already have plans, so I've got to go do them. Bye for now.